So can we just return to the collapse of a star that forms a black hole? At which point does the super dense thing become nothing, if we can just like yeah. linger on this concept? Yeah, so if I were falling into a black hole and I, I, I tried really fast, right as I crossed this empty region, but this demarcation, I happened to know where it was. I calculated, because there's no line there. There's no sign that it's there. <laughs> there's no signpost. Um, I could emit a little light pulse and try to send it outward exactly at the event horizon. So it's racing outward at the speed of light. It can hover there because from my perspective, it's very strange. The space time is like a waterfall raining in and I'm being dragged in mm -hmm. with that waterfall. I can't stop at the event horizon. It comes, it goes, it's behind me really quickly. That light beam can try to sit there because it's like, it's like a fish swimming against the Niagara, you know, swimming against the waterfall. It's like stuck there. <laughs> but it's like stuck there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one way you could have a little signpost. You know, if you fly by, you think it's moving at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. It flies past you at the speed of light, but it's sitting right there at the event horizon. So you're time. falling back, cross mm -hmm. the event horizon, right at that point, you shoot outwards a photon. Yes. And it's and just it, stuck there. It just gets stuck there. <laughs> now it's very unstable. So the star can't sit there is the point. It, it just can't. So it rains inward with this waterfall. But from the outside, all we should ever really care about is the event horizon because I can't know what happens to it. It could be pure matter and antimatter thrown together, which annihilates into photons on the inside and loses all its mass into the energy of light. Won't matter to me because I can't know anything about what happened on the inside. Okay, can we just like linger on this? So what models do we have about what happens on the inside of the black hole at that moment? So I guess that one of the intuitions, one of the big reminders that you're giving to us is like, hey, we know very little about what can happen on the inside of a black hole. And that's mm -hmm. why we have to be careful about making, it's better to think about the black hole as an event horizon. Mm -hmm. But what can we know? And what do we know about the physics of, of space-time inside the black hole? I don't mind being incautious about thinking about what the math tells us. So okay. I'm Great. not such a, a, a an observer, right? I'm very, theoretical in my work. It's really pen on paper a lot. Um, these are thought experiments that I think we we can perform and contemplate. Um, whether or not we'll ever know is another question. And um, so one of the most beautiful things that we suspect happens on the inside of a black hole is that space and time, in some sense, swap places. So while I'm on the outside of the black hole, let's say I'm in a nice, comfortable space station, this black hole's maybe 10 times the mass of the sun, 60 kilometers across. I could be 100 kilometers out. That's very, very close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Orbiting quite safely. No big deal, you know, hanging out. Uh, I, I don't bug the black hole. Black hole doesn't bug me. <laughs> it won't suck me up like a vacuum or anything crazy. But uh, some, my, my astronaut friend jumps in. Um, as they cross the event horizon, what I'm calling space, I'm looking on the outside at this spherical shadow of the black hole cast by maybe light around it. It's a shadow because everything gets too close, falls in. It's just this um, uh, just contrast against a bright sky. I think, oh, there's a center of a sphere. And in the center of the sphere is the singularity. It's a point in space from my perspective. But from the perspective of the astronaut who falls in, it's actually a point in time. So their notions of space and time have rotated so completely that what I'm calling a direction in space towards the center of the black hole, like the center of a physical sphere, they're going to tell me what well, they can't tell me, but they're going to come to the conclusion, oh, no, that's not a location in space. That's a location in time. In other words, the singularity ends up in their future, and they can no more avoid the singularity than they can avoid time coming their way. So there's no shenanigans you can do once you're inside the black hole to try to skirt it, <laughs> the singularity. You can't set yourself up in orbit around it. You can't try to fire rockets and stay away from it because it's in your future. And there's an inevitable moment when you will hit it. <laughs> Usually for a stellar mass black hole, we think it's microseconds. Microseconds to get from the event horizon to the... To the singularity. To the singularity. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> so that's describing from the your astronaut friend's perspective. Yes, from their perspective, the singularity's in their future. But from your perspective, 
what do you see when your friend falls into the black hole and you're chilling outside and watching? So one way to think about this um, is to is to think that as you're approaching the black hole, the astronaut's spacetime is rotating relative to your spacetime. So let's say right now, my left is your right. We're not shocked by the fact that there's this relativity in left and right. Mm -hmm. It's completely understood. And I can perform a spatial rotation to align my left with your left. Right now, I've completely rotated left mm -hmm. out, right? Um, if I just want to draw a, a, a kind of a compass diagram, not a compass diagram, but you know, at the top of maps, there's a north, south, east, west. But now time is up, down, and one direction of space is, let's say, east, west. As you approach the black hole, it's as though you're rotating in space time, is mm -hmm. one way of thinking about it. So what is the effect of that? The effect of that is as this astronaut gets closer and closer to the event horizon, part of their space is rotated into my time, and part of their time is rotated into my space. So in other words, their clocks seem to be less aligned with my time. And the overall effect is that their time seems to dilate. The spacing between ticks on the clock of their watch, let's say, um, on the on the face of their watch uh, is is elongated, dilated, relative to mine, and it seems to me that their watches are running slowly, even though they were made in the same factory as mine. They were both synchronized beautifully, and they're excellent Swiss watches. Um, it seems as though time is elapsing more slowly for my companion, and uh, likewise for them, it seems like mine's going really fast. So years could elapse. In my space station, my plants come and go, they die, I age faster, I've got gray hair. Mm -hmm. um, and they're falling in and it's been minutes in their frame of reference. Um, flowers in their little rocket ship haven't rotted, they don't yeah. have gray hair. <laughs> their biological clocks have slowed down relative to ours. Eventually at the event horizon, it's so extreme, it's so slow, it's as though their clocks have stopped altogether from my point of view. And that's to say that it's as though their time is completely rotated into my space. Hmm. And this is connected with the idea that inside the black hole space and time have switched places. Um, so I might see them hover there for millennia. Mm -hmm. Other astronauts could be born on my space station. Generations could be populated there watching this poor astronaut never fall in. So basically, the uh, time almost comes to a standstill, mm -hmm. but we still, they do fall in. Right. They do fall in eventually. Now that's because they have some mass of their own. Yeah. So they're not a perfectly light particle. Mm -hmm. And so they deform the event horizon a little bit. You will actually see the event hor horizon bobble mm -hmm. and absorb the astronaut. So in some finite time, the astronaut will actually fall in. So it's, a, it's like this weird space-time bubble that we have around us. Mm -hmm. And then there's a very big space-time curvature bubble thing from the black hole. And they, there's a nice swirly type yeah. situation going on. Yeah. That's how you get sucked up. Yeah. So if you're a perfect, like, uh, infinitely small particle, you would just It'd be- Take longer and longer. And probably just be stuck there or something, but no, there's quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. Eventually you'll fall in. There, any perturbation will only go one way. It's unstable yeah. in one direction, in, in one direction, direction only. Um, but it's, it's really important to remember that from the point of view of the astronaut, not much time has passed at all. You just sail right across as far as you're concerned and nothing dramatic happens there. You might not even realize you've come to the event horizon. You, you might not even realize you've crossed the event horizon because it's, there's nothing there, right? This is an empty region of space-time. There's no marker to tell you you've reached this very dangerous point of no return. You can fire your rockets like hell when you're on the outside and maybe even escape, right? But once you get to that point, there's no amount of energy. That you, all the energy in the universe will not save you from uh, this demise. You know, there's different size black holes. Mm -hmm. And maybe can we talk about the experience that you have falling into a black hole, depending on what the size of the black hole is? Yeah. Because um, as I understand, if it, the, 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 <laughs> the bigger it is, 
the less drastic the experience of falling into it. Yeah, that might surprise people. Yeah. The bigger it is, the less noticeable it is that you've you've crossed the event horizon. One way to think about it is um, curvature is less noticeable the bigger it is. So if I'm standing on a basketball, I'm very aware I'm I'm balancing on a curved surface. I My two feet are in different locations, and I really notice. But on the Earth, you actually have to be kind of clever to deduce that the Earth is curved. The bigger the planet, the less you're going to notice the curvature, um, the, the global curvature. And it's the same thing with a black hole, a huge, huge black hole. It just, just kind of feels like just flat. You don't really notice. I'm trying to figure out how the physics, because if you don't notice... And there's nothing there. But the physics is weird. In your frame of reference. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, so another cool thing. So I like to dispel myths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do you need a minute? <laughs> you're holding your head. There's a sense like you, you should be able to know when you're inside of a black hole, when you've crossed the event horizon. Mm. But no, from your frame of reference, you might not be able to know. Yeah, at first, at least, you might not realize what's happened. There are some hints. For instance, black holes are dark from the outside, but they're not necessarily dark on the inside. So this is a, a, a kind of fascinating that your experience could be that it's quite bright mm -hmm. inside the black hole because all the light from the galaxy can be shining in behind you, and it's focusing down because you're all approaching this really focused region in the interior. And so you actually see a bright white flash of light as you approach the singularity. Um, you know, I kind of, uh, I joke that it's a, you know, it's like a near-death experience. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. So you, you would see millennia pass on Earth. You could see the evolution of um, the entire galaxy, you know, one big bright flash of light. So it's like a near-death experience, but it's a definitely a total death experience. It goes pretty fast, but you looking out you're looking out, everything's going super fast. Yeah. The clocks um, on the Earth, on the space station, seem to be progressing very rapidly relative to yours. The light can catch up to you, and you get this bright beam of light as you th see the evolution of the galaxy unfold. And, um, I mean, it sort of depends on the size of the black hole and how long you have to hang around. The bigger the black hole, the longer it takes you to expire in the center. Obviously, the human uh, sensory system are not able to process that information correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. It would be a microsecond, and a, right, that would be too fast. Yeah, but it would be, wow, it would be so cool to get that information. But a big black hole, you could actually, you know, hang around for some months 